Hey guys, and welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Today we're gonna to do a video all about fans. Everything related to the fans, including the after run pump, including the air con, we're gonna go through the all. We're gonna show you how to find the fault, how to, well, hopefully find the fault, um, <laughs> how to diagnose it, how to go through different things, what things you need to look at, fuses, and all of that good stuff. So before we get stuck into it, let's jump into the intro. So you may be having issues with overheating, you may be having issues with your dash clock showing that they're 150 degrees plus. It may genuinely be overheating, but quite a few times there is more to it than just the fact that it is actually overheating. Quite often it can be a red herring where there's been a failure with the dash clocks. There could be a, a dodgy coolant temperature sensor which is giving all kinds of readings. Your air con might be broken. All of these things contribute to the fact around the fans and unfortunately the fans themselves can also be an issue. So I've kind of broken this down into a few sections. I'll timestamp it at the bottom so you can go jump to a section if it's more specific for you. And all of this information I'll cover in here today, I'll also put down in the description. So don't feel like you need to um, jot it all down as we go because it will all be down there in different sections for you, like things to test and all that kind of stuff. So the sections are as follows. Uh, the thermal switch in the radiator, the coolant fan control module, the coolant temperature sensor, the fuse box on top of the battery, uh, the cooling fans themselves, um, how it works with air con and the after run pump. So we'll start with the thermal switch in the radiator. Now this is based um, sort of down here, this side of the radiator. Um, it's about five or six inches up from the bottom radiator hose. Now that is a, a three prong switch. So it has three copper connectors or brass connectors, whatever they are, and it has a three triangular sort of plug switch. Now, that is based on three things. So one is permanent live, the other two are slow and fast speed. Now, um, you can, if you think that the thermal switch is gone, because mine actually did fail, um, basically I pulled the plug out and you can get a, a wire on the plug or a piece of uh, metal or screwdriver, whatever, and just find the live and then touch that onto one of the pins and you should get either slow or fast. And then whilst keeping it on the, the live pin, move it to the other pin, don't touch them all together at the same time, um, you can then put it on the other one and you should get the opposition of speed. So you'll have a, a slow and a fast. And if that works, but your fans aren't running when you're driving normally, then that is likely your culprit. Um, alternatively, if you do pull the plug off and you test across it and nothing happens, then you know you can cross that off and that is likely not to be the issue. It may well be faulty, but it's not the only problem. <laughs> um, along with that, what else we got? Um, low and high. Oh, so okay, so it does low and high based on temperatures. Now, the temperatures I found online, because I couldn't find them in the Bentley and there's very little information online about them, but this seems to be sort of the most common figures given on the value of the sensor. Um, the slow speed, which is not particularly audible unless you open the bonnet and look, um, is about 95 degrees they come on. So normal driving, you don't normally hear them. Um, the fast speed, which sounds like a turbine starting, which you definitely can hear from inside, and it does also make the revs fluctuate a little bit when it comes on because it is such a big draw, is the fast speed, and that is 102 degrees thereafter. So if you're getting up to 100 degrees and you come in and your fans aren't on, then you have an issue. So that is definitely a good starting point. It's always nice to put a figure on it. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, that confirms that. So that's kind of what we're doing on that one. We'll move on from that now. Next will be the fan control module. Now this is a sort of a rectangular block and this is actually underneath the battery. So the easiest way to get to it is take your battery out, remove the battery tray that the battery sits on and then there's a, I believe it's a 10 mil headed bolt which bolts downwards and the um, control module is underneath. It has two big oval plugs into it which then go to the uh, well, the loom and to the fans, um, and that is based underneath there. Now that, there is various models, and with all of these things, like the fans, the thermos switches, the um, pressure sensors, and all the kind of stuff we're gonna talk about today, they may vary model to model. So I'll try and do my best to put up a link to the three models, kind of, well, three to four models, so obviously like the V6, the 225, the 180, they may differ, so do bear that in mind, or maybe contact your parts company when ordering specific parts. Um, but that's mounted underneath there. Now that kind of controls everything. Um, low speed on the thermal switch is controlled solely by the thermal switch. 
Um, but when you turn your aircon on, that should make the fans run on slow speed, which goes through the fan control module, and so does the high, which is when it goes over 102 degrees. And it's all controlled by the fan control module. So I'll try and pop a diagram up for you now. Um, I don't expect everyone to understand the diagram, but that just gives you an idea. If you do, you can screenshot it. Um, but basically, the Fan control module does everything other than slow speed off of the thermal switch. So it's kind of like the brains, it does quite a few things and of course can fail. When you do all of those things, it is expected to fail. You can buy them quite easily second hand. Um, I would rather buy a genuine second hand one than an aftermarket new one, but that's my personal preference. Um, if you're gonna, if it is a problem, it is causing you problems, buy a genuine one. Same with all of these sensors, buy genuine because I have seen, especially with a coolant temperature sensor, loads of folks so people have tried multiple sensors and that's definitely not that trying to move on to other issues when really it's just the fact that it's not a genuine sensor and it's not giving the readings the car wants to see um so uh, what we got here for the ac they are controlled by the fan control module yep um with the ac off which is econ on so when you click the econ button the light comes on the aircon is not on so the fans will not run um, there's quite a misconception as to what is on and off with aircon because it doesn't actually have an AC button. But basically, when you turn a con on, econ economy, um, the aircon is not running. When you then turn press auto button and the econ should, the light should go out, you should hear the revs just blip a little bit as the compressor comes on because again, it takes quite a current draw. So you will notice it kind of the car go Ooh, as it starts up. Um, Low speed, yeah, purely by the stage one of the switch. We've done that, yeah, high speed. By that. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the fan control module. Basically, try all the other stuff first that we're going to go through, and then last, if you've proven everything else works, then change the fan control module. Because quite often or not, it's all the little things that contribute to the issue, not actually the brains of it. They do fail, but not always. Um, let's move on to coolant temp sensors. Now, this is located just here under there where the coolant if you follow the coolant pipes it bolts to the side of the engine there is a little sensor that sits in there it's usually green um, with a brass bottom and it has a sort of a u-shaped clip that holds it in with a rubber seal if you're going to change the sensor always change the seal you'd be surprised um, <laughs> and that does quite a few things now this actually has two functions it has two thermal readings so it gives one to the climate control module which is where you turn your aircon on and off and it also gives one to the dash now of course these should both be within sort of a couple of degrees of each other a um, couple ways to test it i'll show you in a minute how to do the 49c and obviously the dash uh, the pod is because it's an analog gauge is it roughly able to gauge it but you have to remember it is weighted so anything from say 80 to 99 degrees 80 to 100 degrees so 20 degrees it's weighted so it will sit always at 90. the 49c will move around of course degree by degree but the dash pod will should sit bang solid at 90 whether you're at 81 to 99 100 maybe so don't worry too much if that doesn't move uh, the 49c will jump about if you have access to vcds of course you can plug it in or if you have an ultra gauge like me you can plug it in and you'll be able to read the coolant temp temperature coolant temperature sensor from what the ecu sees and on vcds you can actually see what the climate control module sees and what the, uh, the dash pod sees so you'll be able to sort of discuss between the two if they're both relatively accurate and they're both reading from cold to hot um so if you you know you come out to the car and it's sort of 20 degrees outside you turn it on and it says 20 degrees you know you're probably in the right ballpark if you go for a drive you come back in it's hot um you know it is probably 90 degrees there or thereabouts and again so you know that's kind of accurate if one is wildly out probably the dash pod then you may need to get the stepper motor fixed in the dash pod because they are common for failing um touch with mine is okay at the moment um <laughs> but i've seen them quite often right round um so that is the, the coolant temp temperature there's not a lot to discuss about that apart from if like i said if you don't get a genuine one it can give wild readings because at the end of the day it reads resistance and then it translates that into temperature and if it's reading all kind of crazy stuff then it will give you crazy results um if you have access to a thermal camera amazing but not always everyone has access to a thermal camera i'll show you a few pics that i shall take with mine Right, so fuse box on the battery. Now, this is a really easy one to check, common issue. Um, now, the middle one, which is the third one in from the left or the right, um, that is your cooler, uh, that's your cooling fans and the control module underneath. 
Um, things to look for, of course, is obviously a blown fuse and also if the copper, which is obviously a bronzy color, is discolored, then you know that could be an issue because it shouldn't get discolored. Usually it gets discolored if it's really hot, which means it's having to work harder than it should be, um, which is obviously causing an issue. The other option is the smaller fuse here, which is a 30 amp first green one on the left hand side is to pull that out and have a look underneath and just make sure it's not dirty, make sure it's seating correctly all the way down because often it can look okay, um, but then it can also melt out. And you can also have a look underneath and have a look for any sort of burn damage. See if it's getting hot. Plastic is quite a good um, thing because it will sort of go smooth and it will dish shape when it gets really hot. So that's also another good thing to check with that. Um, but like I said, with the, with the green fuse, pull it out, check underneath, because sometimes it will look fine, but it might not be making full connection, and then it will start to arc and melt and can actually cause a fire. So that is a really important one. Also, again, just make sure all the plugs are tight and that you can kind of cross that out when that's done. Um, we'll just close that. Right, let's move on to the cooling fans themselves. So there's two speeds, um, a slow speed and a fast speed. Now, the slow speed... Because the fans, they only have one motor each, they have resistors inside which control the slow speed. Now often, because obviously they come on and run the whole time with aircon, they tend to run a lot more and everything has a design life, especially motors and spinning objects, um, is that they basically just, the resistors break down from years and years of use and the slow speed can fail. So often your car could be sitting there and it'll be fine, 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 and then suddenly your fast bands come on and it's really hot which is a real sort of true indicative indication of the fact that there's an issue with the fans. Now, this also could be an issue with the air con, because if the air con doesn't work, you won't have the slow speed fans with the air con running. So that can be a bit of a sort of a red herring. So do be careful with that. Um, like I said, we can test it with the thermal switch. If you can put power across it and then it makes the slow speed run, then you know that the slow speed is okay. Like I said, slow speed is silent, fast speed is like a turbine taking off, you'll hear it from miles away. Um, both fans should run, always. They're a pair, um, they should both run for slow speed, they should both run for fast speed. There shouldn't be one or the other. Um, so if one's working and one's not, the one that's not working has failed. Um, that's it, there's no sort of maybes and if situations and stuff like that. Um, the slow speed should always run with aircon regardless of the temperature. So if you've just turned your car on, it's 10 degrees outside. Um, someone's getting a bird's eye view of this video. Um, if, <laughs> if you jump in your car, it's 5 degrees outside, you turn it on, you turn the aircon on, the fans will come on. It doesn't care whether it's 5 degrees outside or 30 degrees outside. When your aircon is activated and working, the fan should run on the slow speed. So if they're not, you know, there's a problem, whether it be with the aircon or whether it be with the fans themselves, um, that is the issue. Um, if you turn your car on and it's getting to 100 degrees on the 49C or the dash, again, you might have the same issue. The slow speed may have been broken. Um, moving on to the aircon, because this is kind of six to one and a half a dozen of the other. Now, the aircon may or may not be working, and I've seen it, and I've had the same issue myself, is when my aircon stopped working, I started having issues with my fans, because I don't know whether the fan control module was an issue, or it was just because the aircon's in there, it sort of does strange things if the aircon doesn't work. Now, um, the aircon could not work for a number of reasons. You have a leak, so you have no or low amounts of um, liquid in there, because it likes to see a certain amount of the e uh, aircon gas, refrigerant, if it doesn't have that amount, it won't work, whether that's too much or not enough. So if you've taken it somewhere that's just gassed it up to a thousand grams, it doesn't know the amount it should have, it won't work. The same as if you have a slow leak, once it goes below a point of the amount it should have or thinks it should have, it won't work. Um, and that is all controlled through a pressure sensor, which is usually mounted behind there. Um, so that'll sort of check the pressures slash weight and it should know what's in the system. The compressor could have failed of course. Um, you, that's an easiest-ish one to know because obviously, like I said, when you go to turn the aircon on, you should be able to hear it sort of start up and take a big draw. If it doesn't, that could be the issue. Or you could just have a leak, a split pipe, a bad joint, or the radiator might have taken a bit of a, a pound in. Um, all very good options. <laughs> um, so like I said, when the econ button's on, the aircon is not. When you stick it in auto, um, it should just come on no matter what the temperature is outside. And um, what we got in here, yeah. so if you're here, yeah. pretty good. Covered it without even looking. 
Um, so yeah, air con issues can be quite a big issue. So if you have got an air con problem, don't rule it out as the problem for your fans. Get that checked out as well. Plus it's the hottest day of the year so far. So my air con has been on permanently. Um, now this is one I've just tagged teamed in on this video and that is the after run pump. So this is actually mounted to the fan housing. So you like what I did there? Um, it's all part and parcel of the same thing. Now the after run pump is mounted here, roughly, what we got? 12 inches from the latch there. It's got two pipes that go to it, one that goes over there, one that goes down that way. And that is predominantly for keeping liquid flowing once you've turned your engine off. Now it'll, it'll keep the cooling going round, keep the coolant going round, um, which will then bring the temps down in your turbo. Now this is super important because if you have a turbo car, and you drive and it's 90 degrees when you turn it off, your turbo is quite a bit more than 90 degrees and it will sit there and this is why you get uh, cracks in the hot side, cracks in the manifold because it sits there. Your after run pump doesn't work. Mine unfortunately has just started playing up. It doesn't run all the time, which is another common issue. You should be able to hear it a little bit. It's not loud, but it is noticeable. It has a sort of a hum to it. Um, it should run every time, whether you've just driven to the shop and back or you've gone for a 200 mile round trip. The after run pump should always run and come on and run for 10 minutes. If it's not, the likelihood is the pump has failed. It does obviously sit and get loads of crud in it and mine looks original, so it's probably some 20 years old. Um, it's really hard to test the feed because as soon as you turn it off, if it, put, it puts 12 volts to it and if it doesn't see the fact that it comes on, it will take the power away again. So not great to test but if you've got a really old pump the likelihood is it's probably that i mean you can always take the plug off and test it of course see if it works every time um but i would look to replace it they're 50 to 70 pound for a genuine bosch one but it could save your turbo and manifold if yours has only just started playing up get it done if you've bought a car with it with it not working again get it done because it might save further issues i think that's why i have an exhaust blow um because i've just recently noticed probably in the last couple of weeks that it's Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've ordered another one. I am just waiting. Unfortunately, parts are a bit slow at the moment with getting stuff into the UK. But um, <laughs> but yeah, that's the after run pump. I just thought I'd include it on there. Super simple. It's two screws, one plug, two pipes. Really easy to swap and very, very effective. It's also easier to take this trim off just to give you a little bit more access. Um, I'll have shown you around all of the details as we've been going. I'll just quickly show you the fans whilst we're here. Okay, so I'll start the car without the air conditioning on to start with. Apparently I need some screen wash. So, let's have a lean in yet. The fans are off, the fans are not running. Put my hand on them. Okay, so I'll just go and turn the aircon on. See if you can hear, you may not be able to, but see if you can just hear the revs drop as I turn them on. can just hear it go and then if we come round to the front here both fans have come on I don't know how well you can see that of course but you can hear it like I said it's quite quiet um, and that is it running and then when you come in the car again just pull your pull your uh, climate control knob off and then not off but pull it outwards <laughs> and then the fans will stop slowly slow down again unless of course your car is really hot then they'll continue to run um, but that has sort of proved that the air con brings both fans on they come on slow and they'll run um, the entire duration of that now let's jump into the car and I'll show you this 49c okay so like I said they're in the off position I'll turn it on I'll put the econ on just so the pump doesn't run for the time being and we'll turn the blowers down a bit so it's not so loud in here okay so what you want to do is by start by pressing this recirc button and this upwards button and that will give you 1c now you then turn this knob on the left here down to 49 and this should give you a value press this recirc button again and that gives us 86 degrees now like i said it's nigh on 100 uh, nigh on 90, nigh on 90. Um, so we've got 87 there which is what the climate control seeing and then this is what the dashboard seeing which is 84 so it's three out which is kind of expected um, that's about right two or three out every time and that obviously then climbs as the car gets warmer now I can put my air con on and then to get back to that menu again you just press oh, just press that both buttons again 
and what usually happens is it will go up a little tiny bit because obviously the aircon's come on and then it will start to drop once you're driving you might notice it drop a couple of degrees because obviously it's running the fans during that time um, but yes yeah, so we'll go over to the car you can see fortunately it's really bright sunlight so it's really hard to see but you can see there hopefully try and cover it you can kind of see there that the fans are running um, like I said it's really hard to show you but yeah so you get the idea that's relatively easy to check and then if you ever want to come out of this you can just press the two buttons again and that will bring you out so that's quite a simple one to check that versus that just turn the car off Um, let's go some other things to see what we can get to. So, coolant temperature sensor. It's always going to be really hard to show. Um, <laughs> it's that plug there, this one here, and the coolant temperature sensor just below. So, all you've got to do is just take a couple of pipes out of the way. Usually, if you take the engine cover off, um, you can then move a couple of bits, and it's pretty easy to get to. And it's in a plastic housing, which I would also recommend changing if you're going to be changing it. Try and get a genuine plastic one, just because they come a bit brittle over time, and it make your life easier. Um, can we see the coolant? Mm, not really. So down there, I don't know how well it will focus. It's probably not going to. But down there, that's where the coolant temperature sensor is kind of down there, just above the. Other sensor. I'll show you a picture on a diagram. It's probably easier. I'll show you a picture on a diagram. A picture on what it looks like if you were to buy one. You'll get the idea then. Um, fuses. Like I said, this one here is your third one in. Look for discoloration. That one doesn't actually look too bad considering. And then this one. Take it out. Like I said, have a good look around. And whilst you're there, flip it up and have a look underneath. No problems. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it. I hope this has been helpful. I know this is quite a common issue and obviously quite a lot of people have asked for it over the time, so I thought I'd show you as best I can and my personal experience. If there's anything I've not covered, please, please, please chuck it in there because I would love to add to um, what we've got and it's always nice to share other um, things that you found because like I said, this is only my personal experience um, when looking online and looking in all the books and stuff. So hope that's been exciting. <laughs> Hopefully it'll fix you, uh, let you help some fix some faults. Let me know if it does. Thanks for watching. That's been another video from the Parrot Bros. Bye for now.